In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up a rubric grading criteria within an assignment for Microsoft Teams. To get started, I'm going to go into Assignments. I'm going to select Create. I'm going to generate my assignment. So as we are in our science class for today, I'm going to start off by putting in uh, a title. And I'm going to need some instructions. Now that I've got my instructions in, I can add some points, but in this case, I'm actually going to add a rubric. So I do have a selection of pre-made rubrics for other subjects to choose from, but today I'm actually going to create a new rubric. So clicking on the Create Rubric button uh, opens up a blank sheet. First of all, we put in a title. So we're now going to enter a description. So once we've got a description in, we can then start to look at our marking criteria. It's broken into various components, so we need to put a description in as to what the marking criteria will be. Then we have our headings, excellent, good, fair and poor. And beneath those, the criteria that is expected for them to achieve those results. So let's start to populate the boxes. So first of all, I'm going to put in my first marking criteria description, which will be... Once I've got my description in, I can now start to fill out the criteria. So once I've got my first line populated, I can then add a line by selecting the plus button. And that brings up a fresh row here. So again, I can put in a description of my marking criteria and then proceed to fill in the marking boxes. Once I've filled out my marking criteria boxes, I can continue to add further lines. Um, but for the sake of this assignment, uh, I only need uh, two lines to, to mark against. So going to the top of the page, I am going to uh, set it up so that it awards points. So I need to do the slider across from no, select that to yes, and the rubric will automatically then be awarded 50% for each line, as there's two lines. Or, what I can do, is I can add the weighting myself. However, if I wish to change it, I can select evenly distribute the weights and that will put it back to 50-50. Now that I've set up my scoring, I'm now ready to attach it to my assignment. As we can see, that's now been pulled through to the assignment. My rubric is now here, and the points are displayed here. I still need to follow the process steps to assign it to uh, my students. Now that we've created our assignment, we can see that it's appeared in our assigned list. And it's now ready for our students to do the work. So let's have a quick look at the student view. And as we can now see, that's appeared in our students' assignments. So as a student, we can click on and we can actually click on the rubric. So as our students can see, there's 100 points possible. They can see what the criteria is to achieve the 100 points and what the weighting is per line. In this case, it's 50-50. Close that. So the student can now get on with the work and then when they're ready, they can hand it in. So my student has completed the work, they can hand it in. Let's go back into our teacher view and click assignments. And we found our heating calcium carbonate experiment. We'll open that up. As you can see, the majority of the class haven't handed the work in yet, but the one student has handed the work in. So we can now go in and set about marking it. So this is our student work, got student name, this is the document. As a teacher we've uh, reviewed the submitted homework, so we can now choose our rubric. 
This is our first line of the rubric, the required element. So we can look at how it grades. So was it excellent for four points, good for three, fair for two, poor for one. My assessment of the work for the elements, the table of contents, and there's a glossary, etc. After reviewing the work, I'm going to give this a good for three points. So you can see that now turns the box blue. If I scroll down, I can put in some feedback for that element of the rubric. I can then scroll to the top, so that little drop down arrow, and you can see each line of my rubric is displayed. It's already given a score of 37.5 uh, for the first line. So now for the illustrations and diagrams, I can then choose. In this case, I'm going to give it an excellent. As you can see, the scores now jumped up to 87.5 out of 100. And again, I'm going to give some feedback at the bottom. Once I'm happy putting all the details in for my rubrics and the marking, I select done. That takes me back to the main feedback area. And then here I can then put the feedback for the overall uh, work submitted. And at the bottom we can see the points that have been awarded by the rubric. So it's worked all that out for us, so we don't need to worry about that. And now that everything is completed and done, we can return that back to the student. We can then select our next student by selecting the backwards and forwards arrows here. However, in this case, I'm just going to close this and go back to my assignment page. As we can see, this has now been returned back to our student. OK, so let's go back into our student view and click into assignments. Go to completed. This is our homework. As we can see, we've got the feedback. We've got our points. I can click on the rubric and here our student can see where they've scored and the feedback that was given and at the top the points that were awarded. So to finish off with we can just have a quick look at the grades tab. We're back in the teacher view here. Go into grades. This is our assignment. This is our student here and we can now see the rubric grade that was awarded out of 100 points for that particular assignment. And again, by clicking on the three dots here, we can open up the work and review. So as you can see, using rubrics within assignments in Teams is a really good way for students to be able to see what is required of them when uh, completing homework. And also a very uh, quick and efficient way for teachers to be able to mark and grade submitted homework.